Here we go, Big Bands game number two, KT. Gonna try to close it out 2-0. Jenner wants to tie things. Zareth ban immediately. Do you think, Captain Jack, do you think it's worth a Callista ban? I would do it just to see yeah. what happens, honestly. But when they're on the red side, you know, KT will have a few other considerations this time around. Now, Jenner, same bans we saw last time, but they probably won't ban Nar on blue side. So that'll be up yeah. to KT. KT may try and leave up the Rek'Sai because that has been one of Score's favorite junglers to use. And he's gotten it a surprising amount of the time as well. So I almost Ari, feel like I think that's smart. Oh, wow. I think I, that's a very smart pickup. I almost feel like first pick is a little bit of a disadvantage to uh, Jenner right now. We'll see what they can pull out of it. Um, I think they're thinking about do we ban the Rek'Sai here and then just see if we can get the Gnar without giving up too, too much for it. They I would mean, be giving up the Lissandra as well if they did that too. It's a tough choice. I have a bit concerned here because Jenner, there are now four bans against GBM's champion pool on the table. These are yeah. all champions that he likes to play. Kassadin <laughs> will be taken out. I mean, he's he hasn't played too much Kassadin. He could do the Morgana. He could do the Orianna. Yeah, this is looking more and more like it's tilting towards an Orianna or Jace game for uh, yeah, that's it. GBM. Now, I'm not a big fan of GBM's Jace, but he does play it. I think the Orianna certainly a stronger champion for him yeah. at the moment. See if he has anything new to pull out, though, as well. Lissandra's still available. Lissandra uh, okay. should be first picked here by Jenner. Almost certainly they need to take the Lissandra. GBM's Lissandra can be very, very good, too. Yeah, you got to take it. Yeah, you yep. take you take Lissandra here because Nagne actually did play well. Nagne will probably play a Zir this game, so it's going to be Nar Rek'Sai, and then we'll more, more than likely see Nagne's a Zir. So that'll give Chaser Jarvan if he wants, which could be a little bit more of a comfort pick, I would say, this time around. And the Morgana is still available for Trace as well, too. Yep. Sivir up, too, as well, Captain Jack. And Rumble, obviously not oh, a preferential Rumble. matchup uh, against the Gnar, but they can always lane swap against it and see what they can do. They don't have to pick it immediately, of course. No danger of that rumble being selected with Gnar already locked in. I imagine this Rek'Sai will be locked in. They may be talking about further steps in the draft. There we go. You know, Daw, I'm, I'm a big fan of professional teams letting the timer run out so you have the maximum amount of time to talk, even if you've already made your decision. Yeah, that was something that I really insisted on in my coaching uh, for teams to do. I think that locking in quickly, there's not really a need to do it. But it will be Jana and Corky, so Captain Jack falling back on that pickup. And in fact, the Simmer will be taken again. Arrow did do quite well on that champion in the last game. High amounts huh. of engage again for KT. I'm a little bit surprised they didn't take away the Simmer. You know, I mean, that's if you're just going to run Corky again, you know, Pilot plays a perfectly fine Corky. Did a great job last game, whereas Captain Jack really kind of a Simmer master for a long, long time, for years. So yeah. I'm a little bit surprised. Yeah, you take away you take away the Morgana here. This yeah. is a good draft from KT. That is one thing that KT has done consistently well in spite of their flaws in their gameplay is their draft has actually been very good uh, over, and very consistently good over the course of the season. It's rare to see, to look at KT and say, wow, they really put themselves at a disadvantage in the pick and ban phase. It's been, it's been on point. So I think their coaching staff definitely doing work in that regard and the players the, the ones dropping the ball a little bit in terms of executing the, the game plans could be a Jace here. A little bit of ambiguous pickup. We could we don't see top lane Jace that often these days, but against the Gnar, we may see it. You can see that. Yep. And the Ezreal, the Master Yi, that'd be nice. Did Ezreal. Looks like GBM may be wanting to there we go. take that. I think he, the assumption here is that there's going to be an Azir pickup. And so they want to deny that possibility. And instead, I mean, Zed is not actually the best champion against mid lane Ezreal because the Iceborne Gauntlet can shut him down a little bit. Yeah. You know, you never know. It could also be a mid Morgana as well, too. KT taking a page out of Janair's book, even. Well, Doubt we're more like see the Samsung's book, strength, so. book this this year. Oh, that too. Ooh, interesting. I don't think it's actually going to be a Katarina. The Glacial Tomb would make that very difficult. Oriana would be a very safe pickup if <laughs> difficult to actually hit people, especially the 280 carries with the ultimate. Yeah. Huh. 
Well, Nar can be pushed away fairly easily by John as well, too. Will be Oriana, though, for Nagna. All right, interesting. So we're going to see how well Ezreal does, or how well GPM's Ezreal does, because this is a new champion for Genk Mon. So, of course, we've seen it a lot from players like Faker and Coco, but not so much from the Jin Air Green Wings. Well, GPM has been impressive on pretty much everything he's touched so far this season. We'll see if he can keep the streak going. Yeah, that pickup was really just to put pressure on them to not pick a Zier. Uh, I think we have seen that matchup go in favor of Ezreal in the past. So I think it's a smart draft there. Very safe draft as well from Jin Air. And we'll see if someday can perform well on this NAR. He did win an Azubu Super Play Award for a great NAR engage. And that was also yeah. NAR Rek'Sai run by KT Rolster. Score really following up on the NAR ultimate quite well with a knockup. So, I, so yeah. it's they've got a lot of synergy. They have. Pretty strong engage and a big wombo combo coming in. So Jin Air looking to siege and disengage here. They've got that double AD trying to take up some of those towers early on. I think the big pressure though is on Chaser. Can he perform a lot better than what we saw in game number one? Can Jin Air force a game three? It's time to get in the game and find out. Welcome once again to Summoner's Rift, Jin Air Greenwings versus KT Rolster. And GBM's Ezreal. Let's see how it goes. I think he'll do quite fine on this champion. It does fit into a lot of his other picks. He likes these long range champions. Saw his Ari and the mobility that he did very well with in that last game. Yep. Maybe, maybe he'll do what's uh, popular right now. On the Korean server, I've been seeing it a lot. I don't know if it is on the other servers too, but AP Ezreal has been a thing that has been played a lot lately. In my games, anyway. <laughs> I don't know why, just suddenly, suddenly this week. Starting Doran's Blade uh, does seem slightly unlikely, but. Uh, yeah, which is good, because Ezreal, a uh, AP Ezreal is not good, guys. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know your uh, two shot barrage does like a thousand damage, but <laughs> it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. Especially because this time, Jin Air, while they really did go heavily into AP last game, they've got such, if Ezreal goes AD, with the mixed damage from Corky, they have such a very well-balanced composition in terms of damage. So it'd be a little silly for Ezreal not to go for the attack damage this game. And I did not know that Recall made a bunch of Poros. Oh, what do you know? Well, learning something new every day. Isn't that nice? I See, you know, be you know what Riot could do to really expand this game. You know, make it give it a little bit more depth. Let you like harvest flowers and things like that from around the map and make your own potions on the fly. <laughs> you just want to yeah. turn League of Legends into an MMO, don't you, Doa? It'd be it'd be like Morrowind, or Morrowind. That's like the oldest Elder Scrolls <laughs> game that anyone alive has played. Wow. Even though I know it's the third one, yeah. Old man uh, Doa with the sick video hey, game references. <laughs> we played Commander Keen. <laughs> And Wing Commander. Wing Commander. I never really played Wing Commander. No. It was Descent. Oh, me. that was so good. What a great game. In the DOS days. You can play that on Steam now. Did you know that? No, you can play pretty much anything on Steam these days. Cr including Grim Fandango, which if yeah. you've never played, shame on you. Go play it. Shame on me. I have not played it. A lot of poking on to Arrow and Hachani early on here, as there should be. Oh. oh, nice. Phosphorus bombed. Yeah, using the fact that Sivir doesn't have that spell shield right at level one to make an impact right there. And level two will be hit first by KT Rolster. Yeah. So I still get it. Despite the poke, but now uh, Janair, the ones with lower health totals. Here comes Chaser right into a ward. Ch KT Ooh. backing off. Yeah. Good timing on that ward, actually. And Chaser yeah. coming around, trying for... That's a really sneaky level two gank, by the way. If we look at his pathing, he went... He went Gromp to blue buff and walked all the way across the map. Oh, no! Dark Binding Chaser trying to get away, but here comes Rek'Sai. He's forced to use the flash to get over the wall. Yeah, no chance right there. Score had already done yep. both buffs. Had hit level three, so... 
Smart of him not to go for that little duel. Yeah, Unlikely warp timing. Now he's going to lose his red buff as well. Score is just punishing Chaser so hard this series so far. No kidding. I mean, I, I can understand why they would try that. That was actually a very clever little play. Well, yeah, it was really heads up for Chani really to have a ward there. Well, yeah, really unexpected for them to have a ward there. And that's a yeah. really weird timing for a gank from a jungler. You don't expect that at all. This is the kind of thing, too, where you wonder, you know, what these teams are seeing in their scrims, too, and if this is something that KT is aware that Chaser does, too. Yeah, per perhaps. I mean, I don't think they've been scrimming recently. Usually. Well, not right now, but I mean, you know, in the, in the past, perhaps. Yes. Possibly. It was quite a quite little cute move, but not going to bear any fruit for Jinair so far, and Jack and Che doing a good job of CSing in a tough matchup. Everything looks about dead even in the top side of the map. Score looking for a lane gank right now. See if he can pull something off. Chaser, not terribly slowed down. I mean, it's a bummer he didn't get the red buff, but it's not quite as punishing as it used to be before the new jungle. All the camps give you so much XP these days that you don't really fall too far behind in terms of gold or levels from losing a buff. There's plenty more wealth to be found in the jungle these days. Yep. Lots of experience. Yeah, yeah score actually day. for enemy Gromp. He's really trying to counter jungle hard at this point. Yeah. Well, he's taking a good opportunity here, man. I mean, Chaser went back. He had the really unsuccessful gank in the river, and Score knows that he can fight him, too, if he finds him. That's right. Has that red buff advantage, so yeah. he'll be very confident going in. And uh, he gets some deep wards down while he's at it for his trouble. And Chaser's going to waste some time walking up and going over the wall. Nope, there is no Gromp there. Chaser is there. No sad. Gromp. Oh. And he's not going to see the ward either. Good placement. I guess. So Chaser just forced to kind of continue leveling as best he can. And we heard tell uh, as this season started up that a lot of the Korean teams considered score like the best jungler in Korea, but we yeah. hadn't really seen it manifest yet. I mean, a lot of that was due to the weakness of his lanes, but score's decision making has been really solid so far yeah, this he season. He just hasn't had strong laners to work with, so he's constantly having to cover for their weaknesses. He also did, he was the one to ask to be put into the jungle role too. It wasn't like something in force where they're like, no, Arrow's the AD carry now, you have to go in the jungle. Score asked to go in the jungle and it seems to be a pretty good choice. Yep. Definitely has been working out for them so far. GBM already back in lane with a tier, so we have had recalls pretty early on for both of our mid laners. Of course, Ezreal wanting to pick up that tier as soon as possible to get that Muramana. Yeah quite quickly. And there's Arrow taking a lot of damage actually from the Gatling gun. Yeah, he's low getting mana. Low mana. Yeah. Let's Captain Jack be a bit more aggressive. For sure. Certainly does, just being a little bit annoying right there. Rek'Sai back in the river now. Score waiting for an opportunity possibly in bot. Seeing if there's gonna be any counter ganking chances. Chaser's right here Ooh. by the Krug, though, so yeah. this may turn out poorly for... Oh, boy. Here we go. Chaser needs to get there fast. Captain Jack falking in. There's teleport. a teleport coming down. Jay manages to make it out, but he used a teleport for someday. Trace comes down as well, ults himself. Doesn't catch anybody with it, though. Not sure they got why a couple he flashes, ulted at least. himself right there. I was kind of wondering the same thing. Yeah, he thought maybe he could catch a couple members of KT. I guess he did get a couple flashes out of it when things are all said and done, but... Kind of an awkward fight in the bot lane, but in the end, nobody dies. Uh, very risky, actually, for KT to gank right there when they didn't have any knowledge about where Chaser was, and he w it did happen to be so close, especially since they do have that ward in the top side, so they should have suspected he was somewhere in bottom side and could respond. So, not sure if I particularly like that play from KT. A little bit over-eager, but they do blow Chase Flash. And let's take a look at this one again. Chaser's low, however, so he can't really commit. I, I have no idea why you didn't just old score right there. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Well, Chaser I, I think able he to... would. I mean, obviously he was concerned for his own safety, but yep. even so, KT now going to use this opportunity on the recall time. Oh, there we go. Blue buff. Just hand it over to GBM. They're going to have to. Oh, oh we got what? it with the whirlwind. <laughs> 
What is this? Yeah. What world do we live in, Doa? Score has now lost a Baron to a Dark Binding well, and a Dragon to a Janna Tornado. Well, he didn't smite soon enough against the Baron, and he smited too early against the Dragon. And Jin Air apparently just stealing objectives with skill shots today. Wow, and look at this. Chaser responding cross map as well, taking the red buff. <laughs> Perfect. Unbelievable. Too early was the smite. And, and the knockup wow. too prevented yeah. him from getting the auto attack that would have finished off that dragon. So, oh my, KT. <laughs> as good as score has been, his ability to press D not so great tonight. It's, it's the fundamentals. This coach is going to make him load up a bot map and just practice smiting tonight now. Wow. <laughs> now. That's why you always take the chance, man. Yep, yeah, you got to try it. You don't lose anything by trying. <laughs> yeah, there was no follow-up right there. I mean, that's not going to work out 99 times out of 100, but yeah. it pays that, off big the one time it does. That 1%, man. It's like running the uh, one crit room. Yeah, exactly. Very true. Every once in a while, get that benefit. Well, so, <laughs> in that case, things are uh, looking pretty good for Jin Air. <laughs> Not too bad. Nobody's died yet. Good, good. Score and award. That's good for Jin Air as well, too. Uh, Chaser also got vengeance for the red steel from earlier. Yeah. Very helpful for him to have that little bit of an advantage. So, Jin Air, nice reaction regardless of whether they manage to take that or not. The score is very sad right now. Yeah. <laughs> it hasn't been a good day for objective. It's, it's, it's been a good day for pretty much everything else. Hey, it's, KT's, it's been a great day for towers for them, but not yeah, yeah. so great of a day for dragons and barons. Yep. I mean, both stolen in one day, that's, that's rough. Both stolen by just Qs, too. Yeah, Morgana Q, Jana Q. <laughs> This is what steals objectives, guys. <laughs> Just cue it. Just cue it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get that Nike cross sponsorship at some point. Brought to you by Smitey. Smitey. <laughs> Just cue it. <laughs> well, Smitey, you would think, would want people to be able to use Smite. No, the Q, the Q is the Smite in this case, Noah. I suppose that is true. <laughs> Smote with Q. Yep. Mighty, Mighty Man support just didn't come through that time. Oh boy. Well, Chani and Score on the roam here into the midside. Chaser clearing out a pink ward, but they know he is there. Yes, they do. And they know that Chani's there. Well, actually, uh, they don't. They probably thought that was Chaser with the tremor sense, but nothing sure. coming of little movement into the mid lane. Which is really strange because if you were sensing things through ground, you know, reverberations and stuff like that, you think Janna wouldn't cause any because she's floating. Whereas Jarvan would be like big heavy footballs. Footfalls because he's in armor, not footballs. <laughs> footfalls because <laughs> he's in armor. So I don't know. Rek'Sai, I don't know if you can get like glasses for tremor sense or whatever. But yeah, how does that work? Yeah. That's a great question. How can you detect Porky either? Yeah, exactly. Well, maybe there's like a little, no. It's not like he's got jet engines pointing at the ground. It's just like a little helicopter thing, so. I don't know. Lissandra, too, doesn't really walk. She sort of like glides. Well, she's connected to the ground via all that ice. That is true. Although it's kind of like just rock spikes with this skin. With her extra face. Well, I mean, Trace is doing a good job up in the, here. Oh. Pretty much just a farm fest so far. Yep. Let's see. Tr Q trading right there. Yeah. Trace is just happy, it. happy farming up for the moment. Doesn't want to make the big plays. And here we go. Jarvin coming up into the top lane alongside Janna. We've had these 80 carries been farming by themselves. And even using the level 6 power spike on Corky, Captain Jack is going to see everything right there with the pink ward yep. in the river. But Jack left to his own devices now that he can safely farm. He actually has pulled out to a farm lead against Arrow. Something that's pretty common, actually. Arrow not exactly known for his stellar CSing ability. Well, yeah, Pilot was way ahead of him pretty much all game last time. Looks like they're not going to try anything fancy right here. Someday has that hop to get out of the Cataclysm. and It's like a recall. 
from Chaser. Yep, meanwhile, GBM is a little bit down in CS, but not really in a worrisome way. Still pretty close. Che hasn't been able to do much so far, actually. Yeah. Well, aside from Steel Dragon with his Q, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's been out <laughs> on the map trying to make a play work, but he hasn't found that opportunity. Hachani in score. That is. Oh, here he comes. Well, now he's going to see that those Raptors are gone. Che is there. He's, he should suspect that they are in the jungle somewhere. This is cute. And you see Oriana, Nagde is waiting right there. They're trying to spring this trap. Oh boy, they're trying to be so careful. Tremor Sense spotting people. Achani and Score ready. Uh, Chaser and Che. They know. They know this. They something should up here. know that there's some Chaser, shenanigans. Chaser, Chaser. He's going to walk right into it. Wow. Dark Binding, knock up. Che pops the ult. Will he use a Whirlwind as well? Oh, he got over the wall. Managed to make it out, and Che not getting stunned. There was teleports used by both sides. Captain Jack is right there. Score coming in. A kill though. GBM just takes out Nagne in river. Captain Jack trying to get away now. He does not die quite yet. They make it back to the safety of the turret. Uh -huh. And here comes Trace. They're going to lock up score with the W for just a moment. Going in again. Hachani getting low. GBM getting way to the back lines. Trying to take down score. They force the flash there. And someday not able to get that Meganar. Not able to make plays. Meganar ran out way too fast. Dragon is alive again, too, so Jin Air could get a second Dragon off of this. Yeah, looks like they absolutely will. Great yeah. timing. I mean, this is why you don't... Uh-oh. Oh, boy. No, it's going to be okay. No. Yep. It's all just its just a scary sound to go, Whoa, over the wall, the W catches score, and there's a pick for Jin Air and another kill. Going I, on to uh, GBM. I would have ulted to a tunnel in my own jungle <laughs> to try and contest that. A little I, bit dangerous. So let's take a look at what happened right here. I mean, there's just a teleport coming in. Nagne gets zoned out, and we're going to see the E right over the wall. Trace roll, ult Nagne, shot barrage. And there's an arcane shift forward straight into a Q, and that is lights out for Nagne. And then the end of this fight. I mean, there's a reason why most professional teams don't try and do what KT just did. You can collapse much faster if you are the Jin Air Green Wings. And Nogne could never find his way into that proper. And the rest of the follow up right there. Trace with some really good Lissandra play yeah. over the course of that one. And then KT deciding to go right back to where that fight started. Score will pay for it for his life. So in the end, it is three kills and a dragon for zero kills in a tower for KT Rolster. KT Rolster at least got bottom tier one. But uh, not much else to show for it. Yep. Tier 1 on top lane should be defended fairly easily by Trace. Meanwhile, Captain Jack getting a lot of damage done onto the spot turret. Yeah, quite the turnaround for Jin Aaron. GBM looking very comfortable on that Ezreal pick as well, too. It seems like another champion that he is going to do well on. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. It really does fit with the rest of his champion pool well. Yeah. A big shocker score is waiting right there. Yep. And props to Jin Air for dealing with that very well. You can see Chaser is thinking much more clearly this game about where people can or cannot be. Yep. Because he played out that gang so smoothly, using the Cataclysm and then immediately EQing over the wall. He had a he had a plan in mind. He had the he was ready. thought he was ready for that to happen. Yeah. And oh, Trace, is he ready for this? So there's the E getting away. Score. Oh, someday gets a stun. Trace knocked against wall by the Nar ultimate. Score locks him up a little bit. Trace uses the W. Doesn't even need to use his ultimate. Had to flash, though. Patient play by Trace right there. Yeah. Uh, he did have to flash, but he was saving his ultimate in case they dove him under the turret for a little bit of extra punishment. Very methodical uh, disengage by Trace there. And Red Sai coming back to his blue buff, it looks like. Oh, gets no, knocked what? up immediately, though. Chaser and Che were waiting for him. Captain Jack is right there as well, too. Score getting trapped in the Cataclysm. And you'd think Red Sai could just burrow right under, under it, but no. Already no, used impossible. her tunnel, unfortunately, to get out of that yep. one. Chaser holding on to his ultimate until Score could not escape. Yep. So Score going to be the one making some questionable decisions this game. I yeah. guess it's just it's questionable bad. decisions by Jungler's Day. It's a bad day for Junglers. <laughs> apparently, uh, Score is adding on to that by the fact that he can't smite score. anything, apparently. Score so. is now, like, just ulted straight into his death <laughs> twice in a row. That's not how you're supposed to use that ult at all. <laughs> well, it depends on... Uh, if you have that one jerk teammate who's trying to yeah. troll feed the opposition. True. That, that never happens in League of Legends. Come on. 
our fine, upstanding community. Yeah, right. Good joke. Wow, you sound so despondent, man. I do, because fine and upstanding to. has never been an, a phrase where, uh, you know, packs of 15-year-olds are involved. Uh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I'll give you that. I think you just need to play some Nemesis Strap. Just relax, you know? You know, what's funny is people keep giving me, like, Nami and Janna. Oh. Trace alts onto someday. Here comes Captain Jack, the rest of Jin Air as well, too. Trace running back. There's the oh. eight. Oh, what a huge set. That is a wombo combo, a double kill for Nogne. Make that a triple. Well, that's how you use the Nara ultimate and the Orion ultimate together. Yeah. Wow. Very convincing setup. You have to be so careful. Jin Air grouping. Jeez. And this is a huge turnaround for KT. They're going to take a tower. Can they get anything else? No kidding. Out of this one. Looks like there's not really much more they can take. Jungle is cleared out. They're not going to be able to push to a tier two this early, but wow, that is why Jin Air has to be super careful about the engagements they select and must at all times stay spread. Yeah, man. Rek'Sai, Nar, Orianna, this is pretty scary stuff. They try yeah. to go in on the someday. He's Mega Nar. He's so tanky. Look at that ult, and then the ball immediately right on Jeez, the Mega Nar for the shockwave. What a great team fight for KT. Yeah, that and was there's beautiful. There's a flashboard right here as well to get that final third kill. Huge moment. Boros coming at you. Man. Nagne has been performing much better tonight than he has. Yeah, he has. In any other series so far this season where he's been just an entire non-factor. His team fighting with Lissandra in game one was really on point. Didn't pick up a lot of kills, but managed to drag the fights out for an extended period of time and allow KT to win over the long haul. Now that will be a tower for tower in the end and gold, gold lead still for Jyn Air. Dragon lead also over to Jyn Air. Gold is pretty much dead even as our towers right now, but it is the dragons that really makes the difference at this point. Oh, interesting, GBM has gone for the Iceborne Gauntlet this game. Wants to kite. Yeah, wants to kite. Usually we see our mid lane Ezreal's go for Trinity Force. Unless there was, there was like a Zed in this game. That is a little bit confusing. Looks oh. like they are committing pretty hard to it does sort of once again. It does sort of counteract the Sivir ultimate to a certain extent. That's true. You pop that and then uh, your team gets hit by Iceborne Gauntlet. Yeah, it's going to kind of make that ult not quite as useful. And also, KT, when you build the Iceborne Gauntlet here, the Sivir ult is the main way they have to engage. You really just want to follow up with the Nar ult. That's a secondary form of engage. So that makes them really, really reliant on landing a binding or getting Rek'Sai a knockup, which is not a great way to engage. Yeah. So I think in this situation, having that Iceborne Gauntlet is going to prove pretty beneficial. Someday, trying to clear out this mid lane, but there's a lot of potential poke damage coming in. Someday will go into the Mega Nar form right now. Can Jyn Air last this one out before the Dragon is taken? GBM gets uh -oh. caught by a binding, but Arcane shifts out. No follow-up. Close call there, but he's okay. Well, he had cleanse if he needed it. Oh, true. So. That's true. Now, if Meganar is down, Jyn Air can start making some moves towards this dragon. KT backing up to their blue buff. They're just going to give Jyn Air the positioning. Can oh. they get this one? Achana Catch. getting caught. There we go. Oh, Chaser tried to lock him down the Cataclysm. They got the flash from Achani. That's really important because now they can't flash in for yep. a Soul Shackle. They can continue to kite Machani out very effectively. Much better poke. Score GBM, taking wow. a lot of damage. A lot of damage. That Iceborne Gauntlet really coming in handy. GBM gets the kill. Gets hit by the oh, Dark geez. Binding, but it doesn't matter. A kill coming in from Captain Jack as well. And it looks like that third dragon is certainly going to go Jyn Air's way. You really can't win the poke game if you're KT. So they have to stay back. Can't allow themselves to get caught up. That Iceborne Gauntlet really doing work right there. They will lose a tower for it. Oh. oh. Oh, so close, they'll oh, save wow. it. Wow, they actually saved it and got the dragon. They're going to yeah. try and put some damage onto a tier two, but they're not going to get a whole lot, if anything, for it with Achani, or I mean, uh, with Che moving in there with the shield and Trace coming in just for a little bit of wave clear. We'll have that wave cleared out quite easily. Yep. W in the queue. Finally, they get the tier one in the mid, so they trade something for it, but again, better trades for Jin Air. Three dragons already down. Yeah, let's watch this again. GBM again, you know, we talked about that Iceborne Gauntlet immediately putting it to use, keeping score slowed, and even through that, Black Shield doesn't help a whole lot against AD. 
or really at all. <laughs> well, it helped uh, him not get slowed right there, but it was already too late. He'd been was, slowed too much. It was too late, indeed. Yep. Arcane Shift Forge made that quite simple. So I like what we're seeing. GBM is playing this Ezreal a little bit differently. And man, his read on that situation that he could continue that follow up in potentially a very dangerous moment. Yeah. Of course, somebody coming over the wall could have killed him quite easily, but knowing his limits and. And the really Arcane Shift, too, I suppose. Punishing score. Well, the Arcane Shift did forward. So. <laughs> right, I mean, I. Uh, if it's someone had come over the wall. Yeah, and he had his clients yeah. and flash up as well. So yeah. it, it wasn't too dangerous, but I like how far he went on that pursuit also. Good. GBM, top mid laner. It's a reality. <laughs> it is a reality. Yeah. After the last couple of years, it's, it's strange to see, but it's really cool. GBM. GBM. Getting a little bit extra gold. He was given the Gromp right there so he could finish his last Whisper. You know what really surprises me the most about Gank by Mom this season is not just that he's become good in game, but that he's become good with so many different champions. It really is amazing. It's it, the the rate at which his champion pool has climbed, I've never seen before. Right. It's he suddenly became very good. I don't know what it was about his situation that yeah. transformed him from Kind of a very limited Oriana Zed champion pool back in the early days on Frost is some weird off meta Morgana Heimerdinger picks on the Falcons to now having a very meta appropriate champion pool and also playing pretty much every powerful mid lane champion. I think the only one we've really yet to see that I would consider like top tier mid from him right now is Azir. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. I have no idea whether he can play that or not. I would be interested to see him try. Doesn't seem to really need it at this point. No, and that's another thing that we have to mention right here. There were four bans against his champion pool in this game. Yeah. I mean, we, we look at his LeBlanc, his Zareth, his Ari, his Lulu. These are champions that probably, those are all his most played champions this season. And now he comes out, first time Ezreal in the mid lane seems to be doing very well. Well, the other thing to keep in mind, too, is that there would have been an opportunity, depending on how the other picks had lined up, for him to play as Lissandra as well, too. So either way, yep. he was going to have something that he was good on. You really can't ban out GBM right now, which is a sentence I never thought I would say. <laughs> it used to be so easy, though. I know. You ban Oriana, sometimes Zed, and you're like, well, there, job's done. <laughs> No more threats, but yeah. yeah, now it's becoming much more of a quandary as to what to ban against this Janair. And I think that, I think KT did really well overall the picks and bans. They gave away the Lissandra, but they picked up the Morgana this time so that they have a little bit extra defense against the Frozen Tomb. Captain Jack having a perfectly fine game himself as well. Looks like he's going to be going for that Bloodthirster after the Trinity Force. Same thing Pilot did last game. Worked out well for him. I suppose he could be going IE, but I would imagine it's probably going to be Bloodthirster. He's got that long sword with the BF sword. Yeah, probably, probably going to be that Bloodthirster, like you say. Well, yeah. Trace, I'm a bit interested to see what he does right now, because you have a Sivir with a Spell Shield. And you have this black shield, and now someday Oops. has a Banshee's Veil. So the number of targets that are ultable by Trace is declining. Also, Nagme mm. picking up the Zonia's Hourglass pretty early on into this one. In fact, prioritizing that over the Death Cap, thanks to the fact that he was in lane up against this Ezreal and wanted some extra armor to deal with all of that poke. But. Watching Trace's ultimates in these next fights is going to be really interesting. Yeah. He may ult himself, actually, just because the extra slow combined with the Iceborne Gauntlet should lead to a lot of free auto attacks from GBM and Captain Jack. That may, in fact, be the best strategy for Jyn Air to take in these team fights. Certainly good. And Trace thinking about coming over the wall, but they don't want to overextend it all right now. Dragon is up in less than a minute. This would be their fourth dragon if they can take it. Yeah, this is really pivotal. To have a fourth dragon before 30 minutes is yeah. a massive. Really should have been three. <laughs> yeah, massive advantage. It really should have been number three. But that John Q changing the course of this game. Yeah. Johnny trying to get into that brush, dodging a, some rockets as they want to take out this pink board right here. No defense. Uh, GBM's deep into the mid lane, trying to push it back up. So KT will 
take control over the pit with that one. Nagne push out the wave into the bottom lane. There's a back and forth in terms of the vision control right now, but KT has that edge thanks to the mid lane tower being down. Oh, Janera gonna try and take it. They have two sheets. They're in a big power spike. Well, they'll get that one easily, and now they can turn around on this and start to pressure KT back. And you're right, this power spike could not come at a worse time for KT Rolster because if Jin Air is on four dragons this fast, the rest of the game is going to be on a knife's edge. You know, honestly, Jin Air doesn't need this dragon. It, to a certain degree, now that they're in this two sheen power spike, they already have the dragon buff and the, uh, for additional tower damage and the movement speed buff. They could actually just rush the mid lane right now and start to punish with further tier twos. In True. fact, that may be a better strategy. Someday does hit that Meganar. They have the speed shrine right in the dragon pit. It was it's just up right now. I don't Oh, a lot of damage on the GBM. Good yeah, poke coming in from Nagne. And Jenner. they're gonna go for the dragon. Yeah, I don't think Jenner can do this. So. You gonna get it? Yes, they will. And here comes Someday and Alt. They catch Chaser. Chaser gets out though. No kills yet on either side, but the dragon is taken by KT. But like you said, you know, Jin Air not needing to go crazy trying to take it. They've got three already. They can let KT have that one. I think they should have rushed. I think they should have just rushed the mid lane. I don't understand really why you poke right there. You see the Meganar is up. They just took the Scuttlecraft at the Speed Shrine. You just got to say screwed at that point. They had mid lane pressure. Go take the tier two, punish them a little bit for it. Instead, they get nothing. But they could have taken that tier two so quickly. And still gotten out. Nobody up in the top side. Yeah. Uh, they have Janna and they have the Dragon movement speed. There's no way that KT's really catching up. They're making a move towards the Baron pit now. They're actually gonna activate it. Well, GBM activates it. Doesn't look like they go for it. Well, forced to Rex ult, however. Yeah, they did. Okay. Now, Chaser doing much better this game. Huh? He bounced back very quickly. Yeah, everything's look, looked a lot more crisp as far as his mechanics go. He's not getting caught anymore. He's warding. <laughs> that helps too. KT really Moros. is, though, playing much better this series than we've seen them play before. Finally, some of their players are picking it up and yeah. making some plays. Of course, Nogde with that big triple kill. Well, this is what we kind of expected from them you know, all along, is stuff sim more similar to this. But just has not happened until now. All right, Jin Air trying to bait out the Baron a little bit. They do want to force some poke and see if they can contest some objectives. Pink Ward's going down, so Jin Air also being much more active about Baron vision control than we saw them in the last game. Now they attempting to take away this red buff. Someday, bottom side getting quite, quite tanky now. Red buff will be snatched by Captain Jack. Not really anything that KT can do. Now this is, um, KT's really probably not gonna be threatened by a Baron attempt right here. Janera is rather squishy, so they it would be pretty difficult for them to take a Baron at this point. Any yeah. kind of engage from the Wombo from KT would be pretty deadly. Well, KT at this point, I feel like they can kind of just wait it out until the next Dragon, right? KT can definitely play the long game in this one. Yeah. I mean, Jin Air will have some presence with their poke composition in the late game still, but it's all about them dodging the engage. Oh, Cap Jack, really. KT Rollster. Living dangerous there, <laughs> dodging every skill shot. Teleports up for both top laners. So Trace and Someday will be able to get wherever they need to get to very quickly. Someday itemizing, it's like he'll probably get that thorn nail next just to be a little bit more punishing, but Snar may be an issue in the late game. GBM already has a Blade of the Ruined King now, though. He's been farming up a storm. Wow. Those kills and assists really helping him to push out, but Nogne now finishing his death cap as well. And They're going for it. Here we go. Sneak Baron. That's right. Nobody really close by. There's the scrying run, so they get some vision on it. Rek'Sai coming in. I think it's going to be a bit too late, though. We'll see if Nagne can get it. No, not quite soon enough. And Jin Air manages to steal away a Baron. Very methodical play from Jin Air right there. They yeah. found the opening they needed after continually controlling the, ver the vision around the pit. So they get one absolutely for free. Well, this is a good game. Both, both teams are really doing a lot of what they should be doing. 
And Janera is still clinging to a little bit of a lead. Dragging up in less than two minutes as well, too, now. So KT kind of wanted to wait for this one, but now they're going to have to deal with some extra lane pressure from a couple Baron-powered minion groups. Right, and this is actually really problematic because with this composition, Janera actually can execute a 1-3-1 one, one split push because they have these two Sheen-powered AD carries with escapes. Yeah. So they can play pretty safely and just put on some very methodical pressure right here alongside the Lissandra with the teleport available for use. And it looks like they're just going to set up around the dragon, go for number four. All right. KT does not want Janera to have this one again. You don't want to be at that potential five dragon point in the game for one of the teams. Can get pretty darn deadly right here. Yeah. Well, Trace nearly hopped on by Nar, but I wouldn't want to hop on Lissandra if, if I... Actually, Sunday's in a really good position right now. He's going to force the ult out, actually. Yeah, I guess so. Trace has to get back over the wall, but look at that. That's kind of hurt to jump on all those spikes, though. I would not want to do that. Well, that, that little ring around the rosy, though, is going to cost KT a tier two turret. Looks Nobody like there to defend against this minion wave. And this is that three lane pressure that they can exert pretty safely. I like how Jyn has identified this. Yep. That they can do it, especially with GBM on his own with Clint and Flash. I mean, on Ezreal, it's like nobody's going to be able to lock him oh, down. Oh, have they caught Hachani here? Dragon and 30 Captain Jack locked up with the Dark Binding, but Hachani in a little bit of trouble dodging these skill shots somehow. There's some nice poke from GBM and the true shot barrage. Not enough. The shield saving him at the last moment. Jyn Air, though, should be able to turn on this dragon now. If they choose to, a lot of damage onto Someday. They're going to push him back now. Put G a bit more pressure on the mid lane. GBM is doing a lot of damage to Nard, actually, thanks yeah. to the last whisper. He is getting pretty scary, even with that Thorn Mail completed. I was going to say, you don't often see a tanky champion with a Thorn Mail getting that much damage onto them. And there's a the fourth dragon for Janair now. And things are getting a little bit worrisome for KT Rolster at this point. I should say maybe a lot bit worrisome. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like KT will be able to pull through on this one, but you never know. I, the thing is that while KT is behind, they still have this Wombo comp, and they only need it to work once yeah. in order to turn this game on its head. It doesn't even really matter how much gold they are behind. We've they seen can what be, they can do. They can be... I mean, if they're 10k gold behind, it probably they probably still won't win, but 5, 6k absolutely could turn this one around still. Yeah. But you can see after that first Wombo hit, Jin Air been adapting, playing a lot more spread out, just playing to their win condition, playing for the poke. To a certain extent, it's kind of fortunate for Jin Air that they lost a fight like that early on, so they can be like, oh yeah, we have to be careful about this. We could get totally wrecked if we don't play safe. Yeah, absolutely. You can see how far GBM is playing back right here. Yep. Just going through the jungle. Lots of wards, though, for KT. They, they have maintain good vision. They're not getting surprised in their own jungle. Might have to change his name to GBGBM soon. Gank by gank by mom. <laughs> it's getting dangerous. <laughs> Nagne really, really low health at the moment. He's going to have to go back. Not a lot done with that Baron buff, though, when all is said and done. Nope. Well, they did get the fourth dragon. That was kind of the, the big thing. They got the tier two turret and bot lane. So a little bit. Yeah, it's a very patient game. Yeah. Chani must have eaten something that didn't agree with him. They have to scream loudly ah. like a banshee. This pizza's too greasy. <laughs> it's the Morgana heartburn noise. Yep. I think Lissandra's making more of a <laughs> I ate something that didn't agree with me noise. <laughs> the, con yeah. the constant vomiting sounds. Yep. That's right. They should make a uh, a skin where Morgana just vomits, projectile vomits. <laughs> just disgusting. Wow. Well, they already have Kog'Maw projectile vomiting everywhere. I don't see a problem with diseased Lissandra. It's a little bit, a little bit different if it's like a humanoid, you know? Is it? Yeah. It's a little bit grosser, I think. I don't know. Kog'Maw's pretty I gross. Am, I am H.O. Monty. <laughs> he is, but he's a monster. You expect him to be gross. Food poisoning Lissandra. That's right. Yep. 
Don't even need to change the, Cre the Korean sound effects. You could just use the Korean sound effects for all of the uh, Lissandra skins across all regions. the other regions. Yeah, that's a really good point. Wow, we are saving Riot <laughs> so much money. Don't even need to hire a voice actor. No just kidding. do the art. You're welcome, Riot. And I'm sorry, voice actors. <laughs> Toa, putting voice actors out of business. I know, right? I'm just trying to spread the wealth. It's supposed to trickle down, isn't it? Some say that it does. Others are more skeptical. We're working on it. <laughs> we just need uh, Nami. I've heard she's an expert on the, the trickle-down effect. <laughs> Economist is Nami. That's right. The waterfall effect. You just oh. get all the wealth right away. That's more like socialism, though, isn't it, I suppose. <laughs> well, politics that's, that's and League of arguable. Legends. <laughs> Depends. All right. Oh, more pick attempts. Janair, strong. Ooh. Ring of vision Ooh. around the pit, but they are going to be seen yep. by Four. Sc scores Q. And Baron up at 30. Janair using that Raptor buff from Chaser to go ahead and clear out some of those additional wards and setting up for the play. They really should be very careful about this, though. They shouldn't just do it, lest they be TP'd on by a very angry Gnar. But Mega Gnar has just been popped. Just so. cue it. Just. Oh. I don't really know what they expected right there. Well, I mean, they weren't moving. So, score can't <laughs> see them. Yeah, GBF keeps getting hit by the Q. It reveals you for two seconds. Here yeah. we go. Aha. Eat red hot true shot barrage score. Well, they should know that the Baron's not being done because there's no movement in the pit. Yeah. They should actually, Jinair needs to get better at acting. They should just be running around in little circles right now, pretending <laughs> that they're dodging Baron skill shots. No, I'm being serious. That's true. No, They I know there are no wards in there. They should be pretending to actually do the Baron. Well, they're not pretending anymore. This is real. See, now Jack's moving. Now they know they're doing it. This is risky. Man, Janair, get your get your acting skills together. At least pretend to take it. Yep. Oh, Arrow. Ooh, Arrow's in a rough spot. Someday coming in, though. There's Yell. Do they have any follow-ups? Stun on to Chaser here. Score. Trace way behind enemy lines going deep after Arrow pops at Zionia's gives the rest of Janair a chance to catch up. Someday still kind of on his own, but he's so tanky right now. GBM in the Raven pit. Looks very comfortable, though. Standing on top of a nice tormented soil. Well, yeah. nothing really going to come out of that. Hmm. Uh, Except for maybe a Baron. Captain Jack. Maybe not. Was saved, really. Oh, he actually QSS'd. And I thought he has a QSS now. Che, I thought, used the Crucible. But Jack with a quick cleanse on the someday stun. Not a really good ult from Nar, though. Yeah. In that fight, really only. It seemed like a lot of it was done. He kind of had to save Arrow, you know? I mean, that's really what it was all about. Arrow got a little bit caught all there. All right, well, here's Dragon number five. Yeah. No ults up, no Gnar ult means it's going to be a very difficult fight. Oh, they're just going to give it to him, I they guess. They have to give this up, really. Yeah, oh, they're going to try to come in. Yep, someday does not get knocked up. Thank you, Banshee's Veil. Vale. Now it's a pretty easy time to push down on this Baron. Yeah. They get some more wards in. A couple big wards on the side of Jin Air. Jay will. Uses Oracle's lens, starts sweeping as best as he is able. Now they're not going to sweep that brush. Looks like there is, in fact, a green ward in there as well with the pink ward. Lots of minions up in the top side. Jay oh. has to flash out of the shock wave, but that's yet another skill that's down. They really need these ultimates yeah. in order to team fight. Fortunately, some days is back up for KT. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that, Dogne. I think that was the wrong time to use that ult. Well, Baron being done by Janair right now can score, steal back something possibly here. He's in position, he's got his smite ready to go. Janair still poking away at that Baron. They're gonna back off, they're gonna turn onto Someday. Someday's got a GA too. He is not gonna go down easily. Baron regening some health there. Back up to full again. They don't have any pressure right now. They really need to start moving down the lane. They don't wanna fight in this pit. Yeah. Shockwave's gonna be back up at about 30. Right. Well, Janair thinking about pushing through mid, perhaps. Or just recalling. Wow. All right. Not really using this aspect of the dragon. It is up. Yeah. 
halfway through right now. Of course, Janair can keep, continue to take that buff, but even so, Janair playing very cautiously around this. Yeah, KT could do something crazy here, but it doesn't look like they're going to. And I don't blame Janair. This is the way you play this out. You're playing a poke comp. You can't get too aggressive. Yeah. The danger of getting wombo'd. Well, you don't want to lose those dragon buffs. Pretty you just severe. Too. Yeah. So they will just go back to controlling the waves, pressing this out, trying to turn something into that. And someday has his TP up once again, so he will be able to safely clear out the wave here on the bottom side. Giant Jarvan <laughs> has entered the rift. Giant Jarvan. I love the fact that they added an item that increases model size. It is fun. Oh, well, here we go. Baron being taken by Janair. The rest of KT there. Janair may have to break up this one. They're not going to teleport coming down. Janair does Ooh, back Trace away. With Trace great positioning. That's right. They could come from the side here if they wanted to. Trace ready to come over the I wall. I don't think they know that Trace is there either. I don't think so either. KT being very reluctant to commit to anything. Here we oh go. Trace with the wall. What an oath. What an engage. A double kill immediately for Trace. And Janair annihilates KT. Wow. That was fast. What a great bait by Jinair. No kidding. Trace knew his target, and that was the question. Who is he going to ult? But he surprised Nogne before Nogne could zone you and just yep. annihilated him in the back line, taking out the carries. Fantastic flank. Yeah, and when you've got that th five dragon buff, you do not need Baron to do something like this. Obviously, only Sunday and Score left to defend. The turret's going down. Jin Air with a good chance to end it right here. Score and Sunday have to do quite the <laughs> mammoth defense, but look at that. Sunday knocked away. Nexus vulnerable now. Score taken down. Looks like Sunday soon to follow, and nobody else will be up in time. GA doesn't matter. GG. Jin Air takes game two. What patience from Jin Air. That's Waiting a bit more for like the it. perfect engage. Yeah. Not much, over much. committing to any objective. And then they find it. Trace gets in with an insane angle on that Lissandra ultimate. It's a great fight. Right in a choke point in the enemy jungle. Much better game Crushes for Chaser it. as well, too. Much more uh, methodical, much more intelligent. And apparently, we've learned that pretty assuredly now at this point, you cannot ban out GBM. Yeah, very interesting. And I like Jin Air's confidence as well, banning out the LeBlanc and the Lulu. Lulu, a bit surprising to me uh, that they would ban that out. LeBlanc, not so much, because that has been a go-to for Nogde. But instead, they turn it around, and there you go. Trace will never look happy, even though he just had a crazy play that won the game. He's kind of like Ryu, or only where Ryu looks sad, Trace just looks kind of upset all the time. I think he looks angry. Yeah, kind of angry. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I have to put up with all this stuff.